Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. On a given Friday, I'm Jay Fidel, and this is uh, Trump Week. And our episode today is um, in a week of national madness. This is the week of the big reveal. Okay? <laughs> and <laughs> we have Tim Apicella and Cynthia Sinclair are going to talk about what happened this week in Trump Week. Let me offer a starting point. Can we talk about the meeting of three? And I guess Pence was, you know, invisible for that. Yes, he was. This was remarkable. I was getting emails from all over the country. You got to look at this. You got to see this. Got to see Pence. You know, yeah. this was about uh, you know the government, the government shutting down, right. and Trump was what, taking responsibility. Uh, that was madness too. But Nancy came out pretty well. She did. And and so did um, Schumer. But Schumer. He, he was mad. He lost his cool. Schumer lost. He his got cool. exactly what he wanted. He yes, got he Trump to, to take it. responsibility. Yep. Everyone got what they wanted. <laughs> very good. Very Donald good. Trump got what he wanted because his base ate that stuff up. Right. And they really did. And, and so they, and and he was doing. So no matter where you were, you get, you saw what you wanted to see in that what I call an afternoon with the Bickersons. <laughs> um, I'm telling you, everyone got what they want. If you're an independent, you're going. This is madness. Right. But if you're on either side of the equation, Republican or Democrat, you saw what you wanted to see. I kept watching Pence, and he wasn't even turning his head to look at the right person while they were speaking. He was looking at Trump while Nancy was speaking, and he's looking at Nancy while Trump is speaking. And I'm thinking, okay, he's looking for reactions. No, and then it was like he just there was no rhyme or reason to it. He was just thinking, well, I better turn my head now. It was weird. He it was, was a national mannequin. He was. What I saw was Trump's thinking to himself. Excuse me, uh, uh, Vice President Pence thinking to himself. If I just don't move and I don't say anything, they won't know I'm here. They won't know I'm here. That's, That's right. what it looked like. To That's what it looked like. Right? So the upshot was the upshot. I, you know, he took responsibility. Uh, he's, you know, determined to, to get his wall. Um, is there going to be a shutdown or not? It's coming soon. You won't get support from his Republicans on this. He won't. That's what they're saying anyway. That's what I've heard the last so couple of weeks. That's what we said like, two yeah. weeks ago. He's not, I don't think he's going to get it because it's just bad optics. Right. It's a useless decision I mean, oh, anyway that he yeah. made, and he's sticking with a really ridiculous uh, proposition. It's nobody, nobody sane is going to go along with that. On, on well, you know, Schumer was trying to get him to admit to the fact that the last time it got closed, it got shut down and everything happened, that, you know, Trump tried to blame it on the Democrats, whereas they had offered him everything he wanted. But he wanted more. He decided he wanted more. He wanted to blame and, them. <laughs> and so he walked away and said, no, I'm not going to do this deal well, the we, first time. We so. might, we, who knows what will happen between now and then, because we, we may have the dreamers become part of this negotiation again, and who knows what might res be resolved. And uh, I doubt it, but right. it's, you know, there, that possibility is always out there. Well, I think that's you, why he kicked it back was because the, the, cause of the DACA stuff that was right. in the proposal. So right. that's why he said, no, I'm not going to do it. Now, you heard he about the child, a seven-year-old. Yes. Oh, yes. How does that feed into this? And how does it, how does it, um, how does it play with the public? Well, I know that I watched um, United Methodist um, Bishop being interviewed. There was a number of religious leaders that were arrested in a, the, during a protest down there. And she was talking to Tucker Carlson on Fox News. And I was appalled at what I heard Tucker Carlson say. He said, so if I give you money and tell you to put it in the plate, then does that mean that I get better um, something from God than he'll listen to my prayers better because because I put money in the plate? Is, and that's what you're doing by um, being not, not paying taxes as a church, a non-exempt church, right? As an exempt church, I mean. Um, so he was trying to say that the United Methodist Church is a pariah against society because we don't pay taxes. Mm. And so she was trying to tell them every single United Methodist pays taxes not to mention the fact that, you know, they have UMCOR, which is just as big as Red Cross and just as big as, probably as big as, you know, um, FEMA even for the stuff that UMCOR does all around the world. And so for him to say that, I, I just was appalled that somebody could say that on television. And the guy is popular. People on Fox News that watch Fox News love him. And they think, wow, I'm sure he can't call himself a Christian. You know, no, one of the reporters from Fox News is going to be uh, 
uh, ambassador to the United oh States. Oh my gosh, I know I heard That's that. That's really extraordinary. Yeah. No real experience <clears throat> or confidence. But, but so what regarding about the, the seven-year-old. Well, child? I guess the, I, I, you know, I just recently heard about it. So the question I saw um, the director of Homeland Security. She said that you know this was an unfortunate circumstance. Um, you know, this is what happens when you cross, you know, the border and you don't have, you know, the right provisions and these sort of things. So I, I don't know if the, if the answer was, was this individual, this seven-year-old girl in our custody? Yes. Yeah. If, if she was in our, our custody. She was in our custody. Then that is a serious, serious problem. It's, it's uh, negligent but, homicide. But she made it sound like she, yeah. this all happened while she's crossing the border and she became dehydrated and, you know, the whole thing. No. But if she was in our custody, U.S. Yeah. custody, um, that's not a good thing. Yeah, yeah. She was and, and, and in that's the, the process second of, death right? that we've seen in the past week. Remember that <clears throat> uh, truck driver who, uh, who ran the uh, blockade there and, and they shot him? What? I don't you know, think I heard that. Was about that was the second one. incident yeah. of lethal. Well, they've, uh, they've admitted that these wow. retention centers were, were basically designed for males, um, not families, not, certainly not children. Yet that's who we've surrounded and, and incarcerated is families and children, yeah. with, with males as well. But um, yeah. this is a mess. Yeah, it is. It's a mess. That's what it amounts it to. Is Immigration is a mess. A mess. Uh, okay, let's, let's go further. Let's, let's really talk quick, about the. I think everyone agrees that we need you know, immigration reform, but not this kind of extremism that's going on. I think, you know, every Democrat even believes that we need reform, and, and I get that, but not, not like this. Not, not where people are dying. It's an attitudinal thing. It's a moral thing, too. Right. It's a thing about mothers and children. Right. And it's a, it's a nationalist, populist thing, which well, is very regrettable. But this is the third thing that's, for, that's bad for optics. Remember, the first one was ripping children away from their parents. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. Then the last one was two weeks ago where you had tear gas going off in the crowds. Yes. You had children barefoot Affecting running kids. with yeah. their parents in tow. We really or need to do that. And now we have this death of this seven-year-old child. So these are just bad optics. I, and I would think, and I know, even the Republicans go, this isn't good for our, our, for our, our votes and our confidence in our party. Yeah. And they can't find, they can't find people to, uh, to be Border, border Patrol agents. They, they, or chief of staff. Or chief of staff. Or chief well, of staff. you know, Jared's on the list, so he might be next. I didn't mean to uh, derail the conversation, but. Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah. Same I thing, think yeah. they're leaving under protest, they're quitting under protest. Right? And nobody wants to take those jobs because it's too ugly. And that really makes a statement. Some, some yeah, people will take money over ugliness. Well, remember, you're, you're going to have a future after this administration. You know, you're going to probably want to stay in, in the, you know, and have a, a career in politics or, you know, I don't know, for how many years after well, you, you quit this job if, you, with, if you're working for the administration. Bottom line is, what are you going to do? The worst, the worst thing, though, is that uh, so you lose a, a good man. Let's say Kelly is good. I really don't know enough to know to say that. But let's say he's good. Uh, he leaves. And now Trump can't find anybody to take, the, take his place. Even Christie so, turned him down. I was surprised about That's that That's interesting. One. As of this yeah. morning. I heard this I morning. I wouldn't call Christy, Christy really now. competent or good for this job. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so now, you know, you, you keep looking and you lower your, you lower the bar, lower the bar, lower the bar. Then you find somebody. And you do this, you know, all over the place. You do this in lots of agencies uh, around the White House and around the departments. And what you're doing is lowering the bar for the whole government. Yeah. People leaving and you're either not replacing them, which, which leaves a puka there. Uh, or you're replacing with somebody less competent and less moral. Well, you have uh, the one criteria that is required, loyalty. Loyalty. Right. Well, the result is you get, a, you get a whole government of people like that, and people in high places are, they're loyal but nothing else, and it's, it's sort of the brown shirts taking over. This is very scary business. Uh, Trump is remaking the government. When he can't find somebody to replace Kelly, you know what's going to happen. The government yeah. is going to be remade and worse. Anyway, let's move on to uh, one thing you found, Cynthia, Paul Ryan, and uh, oh, yeah. the, the hidden Yemen, uh, the, the hidden that Yemen guy, acorn there in, yeah. in the farm bill. In a farm bill, of all things. I know, I thought, you sleazy guy, you, how dare you try to sneak it in on, because the farm bill is something that's really needed so right now. So what did he sneak in? There's, it, what it was is he was trying to protect the, um, the, the Yemen, the things that we are doing to support Saudi Arabia in Yemen, 
He tried to protect it from having anything be able to come. And he put come. that in the farm bill. And he put it in the farm bill. Does this give the public real confidence in Congress? Oh, gosh, no. It Jeepers. doesn't. It doesn't even. Sure, in, even Senator in the Senate. Ryan is the gone, Senate. The better. Yeah. Well, the Senate found out about it, and they decided to come forward and undercut him so that before the farm bill was even voted on, he put forth something else. And I thought it was. Um, uh, Bernie. Bernie Sanders that put it forth, right? Yeah. Okay, he did, and I, I, I actually had a proud moment for the Senate. Yeah. For, and, and particularly for the Republicans, that they stood up and they said, in a vote of 56 to 41, um, we want a acknowledgement that. Um, Khashoggi. Kash Khashoggi right. was murdered Jamal Khashoggi, by uh, right. MBS. And they got that. Yeah, they got that. And then secondly is we need to pull out of our support for reconnaissance, surveillance, mid-air fuelings, um, all those things that we're doing behind the scenes to support this war in Yemen. Right. What about the arms deal? Well, I uh, think that's going to be part of it, but I you, hope, down, hope, down the road. It, it wasn't down the road. written into this one, but I think it is part of it. Does Congress have to uh, uh, approve yes. uh, his arms deal, his $10 billion arms deal with Saudi well, Arabia? Going to use the War Powers Act on that, right? I don't know. Yeah. That's a 25-year-old. I, I hope, hope that was in the Senate bill, because that's the real kernel of this problem. Yeah. Know? And there was something, think it was something in the truth. But you had to give acknowledgment that the Republicans finally did Just something. Did and that's, stood up against the President of the United States. Right. And, you know, I took note of that. Yeah, I think yeah, the whole country too. did. Uh, it's really me remarkable. Too. I'm not sure it's going to have the effect that you hope for, but at least they made a statement on the point. What's interesting is the House could not do anything because it's not the end of the year yet. Right. <laughs> and Paul Ryan says it's not coming to the floor. <clears throat> so right. we have to wait till next year to see what the House does. <clears throat> so right now it's only, it's only one chamber. Of Congress, yeah. well, and then you'll have a remix of who's in the Senate, and do they, do they subscribe to this kind of um, yeah, bad behavior right, good, yeah. of our they support could, for could Saudi Arabia? Their minds. Yeah. Anyway, that's it was a, it was a bright light for a moment. Okay, Michael <laughs> Cohen. When I when Michael I said Cohen. the week, oh my the week of the big reveal, I was thinking of him. That's the big deal. What does it mean? What does it mean? Right. And by the way, don't forget the last thing he said. Uh, I think it was in the morning paper, and the Times reported that. Are you kidding me? The president didn't know. He knew. Of course he knew. Right. Because that's what Trump is saying. Uh, he didn't right. know. Well, He's pleaded guilty to what? Is it six different things? And one of them was paying off these women in order to affect the elections. Well, first off, let's, let's go back in the timeline. I don't even know these women. Oh, yeah. Number two, on the plane, April 2018. Uh, I don't know who paid them. You'd have to talk to my attorney, Michael Cohen. I couldn't imagine why he paid them. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Now is, you know, um, forget his first name, uh, Mr. Pecker from uh, the, the National Choir plus Michael Cohen in the right. same room and according to them, you know, providing testimony uh, that they were being directed for these payments. And so he's like, okay, well, I, um, yeah, um, 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 uh, but it wasn't illegal. My, my attorney did it. My attorney directed those and payments. And he didn't tell me it was He's illegal. the one who's supposed to tell me. me. Attorneys know everything. Why didn't he so, tell me it was illegal? So I don't know the women. <laughs> okay, I don't know the women. I don't know who paid it to. Now, yeah, we paid it, but uh, my attorney did it, and he didn't say it was, was illegal. In there, so Sounds kind of like Jimmy Kimmel's Cone. thing last night. He well, we'll see how the invoices. Cone. Right. Yeah. We'll see how the invoices Which makes go. it worse for him, actually, because he reimbursed. Cohen. Yeah. So it actually makes it worse. That sounded so much like the thing on Jimmy Kimmel last night. I love watching the news now. I mean, in the late night TV, because they really hit all the high points, but they do it with that little bit of comic twist. Because it can get a little depressing sometimes watching the news all the time, right? So I like watching, but that's what Jimmy was saying. First, didn't have sex with those women. Then I never paid those women. Now I assumed it was legal to pay those women. And now I didn't even know they were women. That's what will happen tomorrow. Right? That was Jimmy's well, thing. Well, in order to have sex with them, you have to leave know them. So he didn't know who they were. So. He, he didn't even know they were women. That's why he asked them to take off their clothes. I think that's what Jimmy said last night. Cohen is lying about everything. <laughs> sad. It is sad. And, and it, it, it makes but we're becoming hurt. immune to it, as we talked about in previous right. shows. We're becoming callous and immune and desensitized well, to the over 6,000. Before we you know, take a break, I right. want to tell you that this morning on the, on the way in around 10 o'clock this morning, there was a piece on uh, National Public Radio where they were calling various people a kind of a thumbnail survey. And I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't making book on how many people were on one side or the other, but it sounded like about half. And about half of them was saying, oh, no big deal. 
Um, all these reveals this week, all the, all the stuff that's coming out in these proceedings, um, you know, it happens, it happens. It's, you know, I, I don't mind, it's the way it works, and um, the government is all like that, so uh, I don't, I mean, he shouldn't be impeached or anything, and, and he's, 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 mm. he's still my man, he's still my man. You mean Senator Orrin Hatch said, I don't care about his uh, criminal allegations? Yeah. That's yeah. what, yeah, Orrin has but the, said but that. the people on the base side, and, and it really it seems like an awful lot of them re responded on this NPR telephone survey, uh, still back them up. Nothing that has oh. happened in a week of the big reveal has changed their minds. This it's gives crazy. me a, a royal headache me because too. it's not rational. Right. Uh, and it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not the duty of a, a citizen. A right. citizen should be evaluating these things, participating rationally. Well, the Democrats should be calculating this strategy, we could talk about it after the break, but yeah. the Democrats should be looking at this and not jump the gun, so to speak. Don't right. fire to see the whites of their eyes. And we're prematurely, prematurely speaking about impeachment, and we sh the Democrats should not be doing that. Yeah. Not at this point. Right. right. Well, even, even, even Adam though Schiff said that to do it. If there's only one thing worse than an impeachment, that's a failed impeachment. Mm -hmm. Think about yeah. that. Yeah. Think about that for one minute, then we're gonna come back, you'll see. We're coming, <laughs> we're leaving now, みなさんこんにちは。Aloha. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Okay. Okay. Well, Cohn, Cohn said he was not going to be Mr. Nice Guy anymore. He was not going to protect Trump anymore. I don't know what that means. Does that mean he's got more information? Does that that means so. he gave more information? What about all the, um, the tapes and things that they recovered from his office and his home? All of those are going to be coming things. forward. We've only heard one tape that, you know, that pins Trump to it. But you know there's more. And Mueller has come out very specifically and said that, um, that he was very cooperative and helpful. So I think that says a lot. There's other things that are, that yeah. are buried in the, in, the, right. in the evidence. Well, if you're Donald Trump, you're thinking, what, what's going on with all my loyal capos? You know, they're all, they're all falling, you know, in, in a domino-type style and pleading guilty and willing to cooperate. So that's got to be and very going, unnerving. Going to jail for me. And going, going to, to jail. jail. Yeah. Now, I think Cohen still has an opportunity within the next year to provide more, and hopefully that gives him a full kind of... I forget what the term is, but it's basically a carte blanche on the sentencing um, recommendation. It's a lot more aggressive, and, and, and he really? still has a full year Maybe to say, Mueller well, you know, I've thought it. about this, and I want to provide more information. Yeah, yeah, there must be more uh, that Mueller can bring against him. Well, he has all the answers. He's just waiting for Cohen to fill in the blanks. Yeah. Right. You know? Okay, what about uh, the National Enquirer now? This seems like a really, it's a treasure trove over there. Um, again, you know, to manipulate the election in violation of campaign spending laws, uh, to, um, you know, uh, kill stories left and right. Uh, and apparently there were other media in the room, right. which makes it worse. It wasn't just Mr. Pecker. There right. was other media in the same room. So you have multiple witnesses. Well, how many other catch and kill stories has Mr. Pecker and the National Enquirer has, you know, captive, captured and we never saw a light of day on those stories? Uh, for how many years were there capt you know, capture and kill type stories about Donald Trump? Yeah. Ooh, this yeah. might be this tip of the iceberg if, yeah. if Mr. Pecker starts really revealing all the things that he's done for Donald Trump over stories the years. Stories themselves. Stories themselves. No stories reason why themselves. they can't come out. Like the big stories that about the first wife that accused Donald Trump of raping her. Oh, yeah. gee whiz. 
and it came out it gets, it gets for worse, five seconds. It. This is many, many years ago, of course, but it came out for five seconds and then got killed. Yeah. That story, but that's remember, a catch and kill. That's one of them. Well, remember though, these stories are not, you know, these are not criminal. These are salacious stories, probably. Uh, we don't know to what extent they tie into Mueller's it's, investigation. Right. So, you know, I. What I'm, what I'm concerned about is that we, we water down the importance and the significance of yeah. what Robert Mueller is going to come out with. If right. we keep loading the airways with all these salacious stories and say, oh gosh, how bad that is, we're going to become desensitized when the real stuff comes out. Yeah. And I think that's what Donald Trump wants. Yeah. He yeah, wants oh, us sure. to be desensitized over this that. drinking out of the fire hydrant scenario yeah. or syndrome. And I think by the time the real stuff comes out, he's going to say, everyone's so desensitized, yeah. it doesn't matter. Right, moving into right. a new normal. A normal, a new normal. normal. kind yeah. of uh, a new normal. reality So show. I'm always so a little a concerned show. about what's coming out of right. you know, these salacious stories. Yeah, okay, let's go, let's go to uh, Maria Butina. Uh, nice looking woman, actually. She looks better with red hair. She yeah, she brown apparently hair. changed she the first hair color up, several she times. Had, yeah. yeah, she had brown hair. Now there, it's there red are a hair. lot of good-looking women in this reality uh, reality uh, show, um, and she's one of them. Well, that's been part of spycraft since the 1940s. Yeah, exactly. I so. okay. Find a pretty girl, you know. dress her up, and go see what she can, who she can but flirt it also, with. It and brings what she in, can get. Now we're talking about Russia. Now we're talking about the NRA in Russia. I will never forget. I think we talked about it here. Uh, where I think it was the New York Times went to, and other uh, publications, they went to these gun shows in the South. They said, uh, what do you guys think about, um, you know, Russia? Just Russia. And, you know, here are people on the right side of the right wing, they're saying, oh, yeah, Russia's okay. This kind of thing happens with Russia. You know, we should be friendly with Russia. You know, a few years ago, it was communist pinkos, we hate oh, them. Yeah. Now it's different. And somehow the NRA has been compromised Right. And uh, Maria Butina was part of that, I, I suggest yes. to you. What do you think? What do you think I about agree. Maria Butina? I agree with you that she is part of the reason. The thing, though, that I that it sort of sticks for me, the NRA in Russia, there's no, there's no guns in Russia. They don't get freedom of having their arms. They don't get any of that. There's no NRA in Russia. So for her to be saying she was part of the NRA in Russia is the lie to start the whole thing to begin with. Yeah. There's no NRA there. So yeah. she came over with this you, big thing. Are you trying to say there's a big lie involved here? Yeah, funny thing. <laughs> Remember <laughs> Russia's disinformation campaign and yeah. one, of the, one of the tenets of the disinformation is the big lie? The big lie. Speaking of Russia, this is and a footnote, <laughs> um, you know, uh, it's an asterisk, okay? Seems like there's a problem in Venezuela. Hmm. Okay, um, remember the United States pulled out of the uh, arms control treaty with Russia. So now we're in a free for all. Okay, right. we're, we're in a, an arms race with them. Right. Okay, guess who's building a big, uh, what is it, a military base and, and bringing nuclear uh, bomber type aircraft into Venezuela? Oh my. Russia. Russia is going to have a base and nuclear capable bombers in Venezuela, which is only a few, it's not oh like the Caribbean, you know? That's like it's nothing. not that far away. No, it's not very far away at all. So, wow, what do you think about that? And and, uh, and the, the Maduro is the dictator there. Right. He loves it. He loves Russia's going to give him money. Russia's going to make deals with him, sell him arms, whatnot. Oh, my. Um, the whole thing is degrading because of Trump's failed diplomatic policies, international policies right. because of his failed policies on nuclear armament. So now we have somebody at our doorstep. The one thing you could say about the, you know, the, uh, all of the trouble in oh. South America, south of the border, up till now is there were no Russians there. Now there are Russians. Now well, Russians. well, I think what's more disconcerting is there's the potential nuclear weapons there. Yeah. Now we, if you remember 1961, 62, we had this thing called the Cuban Missile Crisis. Sure. Okay, I know that was only 90 miles off of Florida's shores, but you know Venezuela isn't that further, much further south. Right. And so I'm, I'm really kind of surprised to hear that um, that's one of the proposals that yeah. uh, nuclear weapons would be going down in South America. Right. Yeah, particularly when you have unstable dictatorship type governments down there. Uh, mm -hmm. The Russians will be in control, yeah. but the Russians are, you know, they have their own problems. Putin is a very aggressive man. He's, he's reliving the Cold War. We are in the Cold War. Yeah. This is an example of it. Right. This, this is not the kind of thing that helps you sleep better. No, um, it's not. Okay. I, 
didn't know that. So I okay, the inaugural committee. Boy, this is a rich. Oh one. yeah! Oh inaugural my gosh! Committee. This is really interesting. One hundred and three million dollars that was raised. One hundred and seven. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, I had seven, and then someone else said three. So, one hundred and seven million raised, and so now they're being investigated by the committee. By the well, I, I heard committee. Rachel uh, mad about this uh, last night. She said. She, she was trying to get a copy of that audit report, the audit report that oh, said yeah. it was clean, the money was raised clean and spent clean, but she never could get it. And then and with others in the government and in the Try press who were trying to get it. Nobody could could never get it. it. Nobody, nobody knew who did the audit. <laughs> right, yeah, they didn't even know who they they even found. did it. <laughs> now, I know campaign laws, you know, well, there's so many campaign laws, let's just decriminalize all of them. Uh, according to, according <laughs> right. to Rand Paul, Senator Rand, Rand Paul. Paul. Right. Now, um, it seems to me that wasn't there a statute or a very important law that says no foreign government shall con you know, contribute to a right. um, United States campaign? Right. Uh, wouldn't that be interesting if that, in fact, did happen? I don't know. Well, well uh, I think we're going to find that out for sure. I think we're going to uh, find out. The NRA, sure, you yeah. know, the, the, uh, those, those pass-throughs on the NRA and how many other things. We're going to find that out. I think it's going to be central in... Uh, it's going to be central in Mueller's uh, report. Um, there's going to right. be criminal criminal indictments on that, and that's going to be right. that the Russia Russia the whole Russian apparatus was pushing money into these uh, dummy organizations, and these organizations were contributing to Trump, and so the Trump knew it. Let that's what's going to come out. Let me ask yeah. you this: What do you think the loyal base, or those that are not quite on the loyal base, but they're they're supporters? What do you think they're going to think if they really find out that some foreign entity or you know uh, other governments were actually funding some campaign funds for Donald Trump's election? They may rationalize it. They may try to rationalize it in the same way that they're being desensitized to all of that now, that by the time it does drop, like he was saying, they're going to be so desensitized to it that they will justify it, just like the people did for Nixon. There was, Nixon had a 30% approval rating when he got impeached, so, or when he stepped down. But so, you know, I think even then, they knew there was proof. There was all kinds of proof, but his supporters still stuck by him. So, and I, and I think that'll happen again. Not all of them, but I think it will happen. This goes to the whole point about new normal. It goes to the whole point right. about being desensitized. Right. The public being desensitized. These things, they get worse, don't they? Yeah, they do. And, but the question is whether they will get so much worse when Mueller releases his, you know, his final report or whatever he's going to release. Um, that people will not tolerate it, that it will take it over. Well, when you say point. people, are you talking about senators and congressmen or their constituents? Because there's a big difference. If the senators and congressmen don't hear a peep from their constituents <clears throat> that this is outrageous, what's their motivation to say, well, I vote for impeachment? They won't. But if they get flooded, their offices are flooded by people saying, this is outrageous behavior. Our president is not following his, his uh, oath of office. Right. Um, then maybe they will stand up and say, OK, I, I want to be reelected, so I better act. <laughs> the, people, the people will have to get very excited to get And that's the question. Have right. they been desensitized to the point where they're not going to stand up? Right. And part of that is how excited. Mueller plays it right. and when Mueller plays it, right. and what Trump does in response to how he plays it. Trump is very good at this. Yes, diminishing the, the, the consequences. Let's see what else we got. Justifying all of his things with some excuse or another. Well, it was Cohen's fault. He didn't. He should have told me. That's his job to tell me. Yeah, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I didn't know it was highly. I didn't know. I, didn't know. I didn't know it was a felony. When you're being audited by the IRS, don't you say, talk to my accountant. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to Even though I told my accountant, I want this deduction, <laughs> come hell or high water. You know? he's, gonna, he's probably got a list of all the defenses and the machinations and distractions he's going to pull on us when, right. when Mueller comes oh, out. Oh, I'm sure he does. So, I mean, it's a real question that you raise. I agree. As to whether anything will happen, even in a worst case, and worse for him, worst case analysis uh, about kind of result. So what's going to happen next week? You think Mueller will come out next week? No. No. Not yet. When is Mueller going to come he out? He still has, he can't, he still gets more, more leads, if you will. And so he's got to follow up on the leads. I'm yeah. sure he wants to find out what's going to happen with the investigation into the campaign financing. Because if he can find some Russian money there, boy, it's big trouble. Well, and I think it's not just for the campaign financing. I think there's a part that's been left off the table that's starting to creep on to the table, and that is to what degree was Russia money used or private money used in Russia that helped finance Trump's empire? Right. And to what degree was that potentially you know, laundering of monies 
or to what, what sphere of influence did that money and those loans that Donald Trump received have on him in the office of President of the United States? Right. Yeah. Right. This is really awful. I mean, I, I've seen one of the things I think Trump could do, will do, will do, when all this pops out in a way that it, it could push him over the tipping point, push the people over the tipping point, is um, create this huge distraction, like a war. Like a war. Like a war. Like a He's war. wanted a war since he got in office. Yeah, I mean, after all, the, <laughs> the whole the caravans are an invasion. Right. You know, so you heighten public concentration on those things and, again, distract them from the reality mm -hmm. and from the problems in his office and administration. Well, there's a lot of rich opportunities, the Sea of China with the China, you know, in that one island. Uh, there's certainly the North Korean opportunities. There's a bound, you know, a limitless opportunities for him to uh, seize a conflict to get the attention off of these issues. Yeah, okay. I've been worried about that since the very beginning, is that he wants a war. And even a small one in our own country, it's like he tries to, to incite people. And then, and we've talked about this before, it's what I think he wants more than anything. And that is to be able to declare martial law. If there's all these big riots in the streets, then he can declare martial law. If he declares martial law, nobody, there are no checks and balances. I'm sure for that's him on the list, that. too. So, yes. you know, you, you find a scapegoat externally or internally, you make a right. fuss, and then and you get everybody's attention and you take all the oxygen out. Okay, Cynthia. Uh, Cynthia Sinclair, t uh, uh, Tim Apicella, thank you so much for coming down. You're welcome. Thank you. you. Next week, the same, yeah? Next right. week. Okay, Trump week. Trump week. Who knows what we'll have next week, right? <laughs>